Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing my nails. Um, I'm starting with a clear base. This was kind of just like an in-between situation to keep my nails strong while I waited to do these nails, which ended up being my birthday nails. Uh, so these are my birthday nails. So I'm just going over and filing down some of the base that I had on there. It was just the zombie base and zombie top, just to kind of keep everything solid and me not breaking my nails leading up to me doing them um, because I do that often if I have nothing on my nails. I'm so hard on my hands. I mean, I'm sure you could imagine I'm constantly like dunking my fingers in acetone and alcohol, so makes sense. Um, we're just starting off with prep. So push back the cuticles now using a little, this isn't the Erica's ATA nib bit. This is another one. I think I got it on Tat Toronto. It's just a little fine cuticle guy. It's so tiny and skinny. It's really nice to get up under there. Um, but in comparison to the Erica's ATA nib bit, this one is a fine, whereas the nib bit is a medium bit. So there's just a difference in kind of speed of removal, how fast it gets things off because of the grit. And then we're going in and nipping my cuticles. This is just a quick video today because, I mean, you'll see when it comes down to the design. I mean, you've probably already seen in the thumbnail, but uh, it's not too, not too crazy, but they turned out super, super cute. And so I was super happy with them. Um, so just going around and removing any of that dead skin. Just the dead stuff. I know what I say it every single time. And then I'm just trying to match some of the lengths between my nails or get a little bit close because they were a little bit all over the place, especially on my index. Um, I wasn't, I don't know. It's up to everyone's personal preference. I'm not always aiming for perfection in length and completely matching length. I'm fine with some of the nails being a lot long, or not a lot longer, a bit longer. Uh, my clients feel the same way too. I let them do whatever they want. If they want to focus on just growing, we don't have to match lengths. It's all personal preference. So I just try to get mine as close as we can, but I wanted to leave a little bit of length because it's not often that I have some length on my nails. And then I'm just going in with my sanding band and buffing over the natural nail in preparation get that all wrecked up as well as smoothing out the base coat that i have still on there and making it kind of flush to the nail so i can just go right over top of it and i'm just doing that on a low setting on my e-file and then i'm going in with the zombie base coat i love this base coat it's nice and thick when I'm going over a base coat too, oftentimes, I don't think I show it, but what I'll do is I'll do the coat and I'll flip my hand upside down. So I get a bit of self-leveling and it kind of evens everything out. And then I'll flash cure. I'm not showing all of that because you guys have seen me do it a trillion times at this point. But I'm just going in, applying to each nail. I'll usually do two nails and then flash cure after I've done two. The thumb I'll do and then flash cure and then I'll, you know, just so nothing moves around. I'm going in with this beautiful green color. I love green and I'm doing green and pink today and that is one of my favorite color combinations. This green especially is so good, it's so nice. Oh, you can see it with my ring, um, and green and pink. I love it. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this ring. This is my engagement ring. Um, it's made by Alex Alexander Bergeron. He's in uh, Montreal, sorry. Uh, but yeah, so he custom made that for, for me, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, he's gonna do our wedding bands too because we're getting married in a few months. Uh, anyways, going in with the D-Gel painting gel. This is from the D-Gel Ginny collection. Uh, I love this pink. It's so cute. It's a, I was really picky about which, because I wanted painting gels, but I was really picky about which collection I got. And I just feel like this D-Gel Ginny collection has the best colors. At least that speak to like my needs. Um, it's got lots of fun colors, some brights. And then you get like the black and the white and stuff. There's a clear as well, but I've never used the clear actually. I wonder what people use it for. I'm sure regular clear stuff. Anyways, I'm going through and I'm writing cute on my nails. Because if you guys can't sense it from the videos, I feel like all I say in response to anyone ever is cute. Uh, even that, like my clients comment on that being like my key phrase. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Also, this is the first voiceover I'm recording in my new studio. How fun. But my dumbass forgot my microphone. I literally packed up everything, took the, the subway here, the streetcar here, um, and I forgot my microphone. So I'm recording it on my phone. I hope it's not terrible. <laughs> I don't think it will be. It sounded okay on the test. Anyways, it's just this one time. I hopefully won't forget it the next time. So I'm writing cute, just cute little bubbly letters. 
and giving that a cure. And then we're drawing a bunny because I'm addicted to drawing bunnies right now. Uh, I'm drawing that little crossing to help with my shape, but I really don't follow it at all. It was there as a guide, but you'll see that there's nothing. Look at that, not even close to being following the cross. Um, the cross is there to help, but you know, sometimes I just I just run wild. And then I'm just going in and creating the little ears, or big ears, I should say. Well, I probably bonked my head off the camera there. It's so funny because I remember painting this and I remember being like, oh no, like the, <laughs> I forget what it was, but something wasn't feeling anatomically correct. And I was like, it's a goddamn cartoon bunny. What is anatomically correct about a cartoon bunny? Nothing, nothing has to be. So, I don't know, we're just being dramatic. Or I was at the time, but I'm like, it's much cuter when it's a little goofy. So this is, I cured it, the white layer, and I'm going over with that same pink that I used for the lettering. And just painting some little inner ears. And then doing that cross situation again, but with black to create some eyes. This one I think I, I use the cross a little bit more than I did on the, the head shape. Not perfectly, but I still, I aim. I aim to use it more. So just doing a little round eye. And then giving her a little eyelash brow situation. If you watched my Coach Topia video, I did a very similar bunny inspired by their bunny on one of their t-shirts. So this one is inspired by that one. Except for the little winky eye. That was that was all me. Uh, then going to pop that in for a cure. And then going over on the eyes and just doing a little star in the eye and a little dot to look like I don't know. Give it some life. <laughs> and I'll cure that as well. Uh, and now I'm going over the nails with a matte top coat. And this is because the next step I'm going to be using a pen. And the pen will work fine on a non matte top coat, but when you go to top coat it, it'll pull the pen. So you want to make sure that it's, you put down a, a matte top coat because it kind of will hold the pen in place. Uh, this pen Vanessa got for me from Umomo in Markham. You can see the details on it there. I have no idea anything about it. I've never even looked it up. It just happened to work really well when I tried doodling on my nail one time. And so now it's become a nail pen. She bought it for me with like a journal. It was supposed to be for journaling. But of course, I'm like, nope, it's for nails. So I'm going around all the lettering. This is a super easy way to like do fun outlines. I've started... Um, definitely using this kind of method a lot more because it's quite easy and I'm just gonna ground all the letters there constantly switching my hand so it's easier obviously if you're doing it on someone else it'll be easier to just draw straight up but when I'm doing it on myself it's, you gotta move your hand around like crazy How cute. And then I'm just going over that with a clear, easy clear, the Mayo easy clear, just to cap everything in. And because I use the base coat, it's not pulling at the um, pen at all. Then I'm wiping it down because I'm gonna add a couple stickers. I've talked about these Glitter Star stickers before. And yes, you can paint them, absolutely. But this is a great kind of time saver, getting these stickers. Because Glitter Stars, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, they have to be perfect. So I'll spend a good amount of time on them. And then I ordered these online, thinking that I would just use them every now and again. But I use them all the time. I love them. They're so handy. Oops, just kick the garbage can. And then I'm going over with a zombie top coat, locking everything in. I love zombie. I love the zombie products, zombie base and zombie top. They're, they make your nails feel so solid. It's really, really nice. Like lots of my clients who could use builder, if we use zombie base and zombie top, they get enough strength from them. Okay, so now I've jumped over to my other hand, which I painted the same green and I'm just matte top coating because we're doing some airbrushing. So I'm using my little star stencils that I made and I'm using uh, One Air airbrush paints. 
These are a mix of two different pinks to get some vibrancy. And I'm basically gonna go across my nails and do little star combinations across all of my nails because I do love Airbrush and Star. And look how cute that looks. The color combo, the whole situation. And airbrushing like this is relatively easy to do with your non-dominant hand, um, which is great because I hate doing hard things with my non-dominant hand. So I'm just going around and filing the edge. I treat airbrushing like I treat chrome. I file the edge and I clear coat everything in. But first I'm adding these stars, glitter stars, because you know, it's just so cute. Got to tie in the two hands. And then I'm going over with the long base from Mayo. And this is just to cap everything in. It's what I use to cap in my airbrushing regularly, just to make everything as chip proof as possible. By using a base coat and then a top coat, I don't have any airbrush chipping, which is great. Uh, and then I'm going in with my zombie top. See what a simple set this was. It feels too simple, but I love it. I loved the set so much. I ended up keeping it on for five weeks. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below, what videos you want to see from me next, and I will catch you in the next one.